the auto industry is always challenging. I mean, I always tell people when you look at the auto stocks, the industry itself is capital intensive, labor intensive, cyclical, low growth, competitive, highly competitive, and highly regulated. That's a tough mix. Yeah. You know, Kelly and I were talking about this during the commercial break. I think, not that anybody asked, that the auto industry next year could have the kind of year that retail had a couple of years ago when, you know, they, the, the, the realization came about that there was over capacity. They had to downsize and, and really they, retail stores were closing left and right at that time two years ago. What about the auto industry next year? What kind of, how will it manifest itself, do you think? I'm a bit more optimistic. Okay. I, I think there are a couple of things people are missing. You know, first of all, dollar revenue continues to increase for the industry because of light trucks. So even though unit sales are kind of flattish this year, dollar revenue's up. You've had the biggest increase in licensed drivers over the last three years that we've seen in 40 years. You know, the millennials are now moving into the prime age where they buy houses and cars, and they're buying them like they have in the past. So contrary to what some people think, millennials are buying cars, they are buying houses. So I'm actually, when you look at some of the other events going on in the industry in 2019, I'm a bit more optimistic than that. I'm your poster child, Michael, uh, for all of that. I'm, I'm thinking more about the Gen Zers who aren't getting driver's licenses at all. So this is all, all encouraging news. But you mentioned that light trucks have been a real source of strength. What about heavy yes. trucks? Every time I change the channel, there's oh. another commercial yep. for these, you know, worker vans. Um, what's yeah. going on? Why is there so much competition? Is this becoming a real lucrative part of the auto market? No question. I, when I look at the commercial side of the business, I include pickup trucks and large vans, and they've gained share in the marketplace now. This would be the sixth straight year. You know, the vehicle of choice for the industrial side of the economy are pickup trucks, and pickup trucks are, are perfect for that type of environment. And you've got to have them in our economy. You know, you know back to the licensed driver issue, the, the biggest increase in the percentage of licensed drivers goes from your 20s to 30s. And the millennials are following that same track. Typically, you don't have a big high percentage with people in their 20s with a license to drive. So the underlying demographics for the industry are very positive. We cannot ignore the largest automobile market in the world. That would be China. China. And we know that mm -hmm. uh, economy has slowed down appreciably. Yeah. What does that do for these guys? Nothing positive about that. Uh, you know, if, number one, you hope you get some resolution to the trade deal. And, and number two, you know, General Motors and Ford are both in China with self-funded joint ventures. So there's not as much financial risk. In addition, you know, when you look at General Motors, it's going to be a $2 billion after-tax contribution to General Motors earnings. And it's on an equity basis. So it does not they're not on the hook for the capital aspect of it. Uh, but the Chinese market, it's been down pretty much further than people expected over the last couple of months. You hope to see some resolution and some positive signs. Michael, uh, the only good news is, yeah, go is inventory is in good shape in China. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to jump in there. I was just going to ask why GM is your top pick for next year. A couple of reasons. Uh, the first one, I, I think when you look at some of the trends that could take place in 2019, GM's on a higher earnings track than people realize. They're going to have near record earnings in 2018, despite going through the changeover of the big full-size pickup trucks, the profit generator. I think China will turn and at least stabilize. GM's cruise automation subsidiary. GM has what they call a capital markets day scheduled for January 11th in New York. And, you know, my, that's before the Detroit Auto Show. So we could hear some discussion about them spinning out to shareholders, the Cruise Automation subsidiary. We already know that's valued at $15 billion. GM's market cap right now is $45 billion. And so if you kind of look at it, it's a net cost to GM as it stands today. You're getting the rest of General Motors at about one times, one and a half times EV to EBITDA. So it's, it's, after it splits, there's incremental value to GM shareholders.